Welcome back to Biafra News Support Biafra Ada Biafra here. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you. Depending on where you're watching me from Biafra, I bring you another video of Simon Ewa and uh, the teachings of uh, Biafra Prime Minister Simon Ewa. Simon Ewa has been the one holding Biafra's struggle since the kidnap of our leader Mazin Namdekano. A lot of people have kicked against his good works. A lot of people have uh, tried their best to sabotage his efforts and they keep failing and they will continue doing so because the money waited for somebody to carry on the heavy mantle after the kidnap of our leader Mazen Nam the Kano. He waited and waited. Nobody was able to carry or lift that heavy mantle of more than 70 million beer friends. He took it upon himself and he since he took it upon himself, tongues has been wagging. People have been ranting. Those that have nothing to say on social media before now now have something to say because it's against Simon Eba. And all these lies and propaganda all the blackmails, all the insults, all the names call, all the name callings, uh, never stopped him from the good work he's doing, from the fight for freedom. Mm? He has been doing his best and will continue doing until the Hamadike comes out and they take over the mantle. They wanted the mantle to be trampled on. They wanted the mantle to, to, to be mocked. <laughs> he waited. He waited. And when they saw that uh, he has lifted the heavy mantle, they started paying people to write against him, talk against him, push the lies, the propaganda, the, the blackmails. Up to today, no evidence. So I'm going to allow you to watch this particular video and uh, listen to all he said. Hmm? Simon Ewa is doing everything he can to make sure Biafra spirit keeps, you know, fears and like... They wanted the Biafra struggle, the spirit to die, so that they would say, oh, look at it. You see what we, what we said? Simon Ewa found out that this is what they, want, they wanted to do. The enemies, the saboteurs, the betrayers wanted to do. He said, no. All the levels and the sacrifices of our Hamadi Kemaz and Namdekan will not go in vain. He decided to hold this very mantle. You are talking about Biafra today is because of Simon Ewa. You are still hearing about Biafra today is because of Simon Ewa. Because this is what the enemies never wanted. This is what they never wanted. They never wanted it. That is why you see a lot of those that call themselves hardcore Biafrans. Instead of them to sit down and uh, use their tongue and count their teeth. They started fighting against Simon Ewa. And I'm sure that many of them, they have realized the truth. But they, they, they found out that, oh, to them, it's, uh, it's too late to turn back the hands of them or to go back. So it's better we'll continue this place. After all, we are receiving small, small change here. For Joyce Simon Ekbana, nobody's going to be giving us this change anymore. Or should we talk about the death stone that was praising Simon Ekbana before now? And when he found out that uh, what, what he came for cannot be achieved, through Simon Ewa, he became a saboteur. He started castigating Simon Ewa, insulting Simon Ewa, uh, speaking against Simon Ewa. Is this somebody that was praising Simon Ewa before now? <laughs> that is for you to say that a lot of saboteurs, betrayers, stooge, puppets are in this very struggle. So I'm going to allow you to watch this particular video. Don't forget to share it as you watch. Don't forget to subscribe. Share it on the social media platform. Let others watch with you and share it also. Thank you all. God bless Simon Epa. Bless be friends all over the world. And Ahmadi Kemazin Nam Dekan. May Elohim guide and protect him. Continue giving him more courage and strength. He said, he said, he said, thank you all. Now here is the video. The reason why my YouTube account was closed was because I shared the image of the attack on the Kenga Imo's residence. Where there was somebody lying on the floor you know, on the street there and because of that reason they claim it violated the community standard and because i have shared many many images that according to youtube violated their community standard and which must be shared so i risk everything i did to build the youtube channel just trying to prove to the world what the nigeria government and these criminals have done to the Biafra people by posting those images, risking over 30 million viewers on the on the YouTube, risking about 70 something thousand people who subscribe to our YouTube channel in order to prove to the world what we are going through today. 
We have our own platform where we can post all those things and nobody will block us. Now they are claiming that, you know, these are people without a vision. They have been fighting this thing therefore for over 30 years. They cannot even have ordinary website where they can do something on their own. They don't have that kind of mentality. They don't have a mentality of a visionary mentality that can make them be creative and solve problems. They can bring solutions to their problems. But to, in autopilot, immediately our social media, even Mazenam Bikano's own social media was blocked. His Facebook was blocked, was removed. And when Simon Epa, when it comes to the return of Simon Epa, they claim, I deleted the, the page. That is what they are using to brain, brainwash those who cannot think by themselves. But I want, you know, I want you to listen to what they are discussing in the meeting of IPOB in Kuwait. And this is what they discuss in other parts of the unit where they are still gathering in their, in their few, in their few uh, numbers. No place, explain nowhere. What you really have in those IQ is patience. Yes. Okay. They, they say time, heal, everything. Yes. They need patience. So they will do what they did to Mazenam the Kantomi. In the long run, the only um, negative part of it is that what you are supposed to get within 50 days, people testing it in one or 30 days. Because well, of this <laughs> delay, this. Uh, they can never come back to this you know how this information it's under crime if he shuts down any of his accounts yeah he said different time yes, different time different different time. Time. that means there's something that is hiding yeah they are, hiding. they are now contemplating in their meeting that if i shut down my social media handle is a crime that it means that there is something I am hiding. My people, is there anything I am hiding? <laughs> Everything is on social media. When I have a broadcast, so many people stream it in their own platform. Is there anything? I'm, do I look like somebody who is scared of anybody or hiding anything? No. But they have to say it for them to continue to control few individuals who stick together with them and praise them. And you can before to open that yeah. so far, you must have gotten so, one, two, three, four, five likes. That is it. Once you have record of likes in your statement, Joe, from that publication, you said from which date they started investigating. I think that was from uh, 2023. Yeah, the month. They said, I think, October. Uh, yes. And what they are discussing is from the statement, they claim when they started investigating me. <laughs> Information is coming from an illiterate in Finland called William Wokedi, a criminal too. That is where the information is coming from. Somebody who cannot read Finnish. He relies on what other people read to him. Or he relies on Google translation. He has lived in Finland for many years. He can't speak Finnish. He can't understand the language. Only when he, he go to Google, he copy it, translate it, he carry the information without understanding language. Look at the information they are passing to people. That, oh, they, are, they were investigating me and I have 18 charges and uh, I have lied and I deleted my, you know, so something that doesn't exist. That I deleted the testing myself and I was lying. So for that reason, it's another crime, you know. But this is supposed to be IPOB meeting where they discuss how to release Mazenam the Kano and where they're supposed to discuss about Biafra, which they put people on the street to go and die. And this is what they're discussing. And on that time, look, they, that uh, message they shared, you see their process now. They have stages mm -hmm. where they are going through. And it's already, they say it's already a suspect you know, of criminal activity. So, and 18 charges is not, uh, it's not one day. It's not one day. We must Are you hearing that? They say, I am a suspect already. You know, and 18 count charges is not a small thing. This is somebody that somebody in Nigeria have confessed of sponsoring them to kill Igwe. And I have killed an Igwe in Igbo land. This is somebody who has confessed 
of invading where evil people, where young people were having meeting and kill them and tag them courtist. But they were never courtist. They were just political opponent that his own political godfather hired to go and kill them. He confessed in the meeting of yesterday that I played the audio. All of you heard it. Now he is calling somebody else a criminal that he has 18 count charges. I do not know where they see 18 count charges. But ask him now. Bring where you see 18 count charges against Simon Ekpa. They cannot bring it. It doesn't exist. But the, he's telling that to the people in Kuwait and deceiving and brainwashing them just to get happy. No, Simon Ekpa have 18 count 18. And what you are telling, if, if they claim that Simon Ekpa have 18 count charges, it is not about me. <coughs> I want Biafra to understand that when they say 18 count charges on Simon Ekpa, it's not about me. They are actually talking about Mazin and Bikan. But what I'm trying to tell you is that whatever I have done today, whatever I'm doing today, Mazin and Bikan have done the same thing, and it is not a crime. But they are telling you that what we, me and Mazin and Bikan, have done and what we are doing to restore Biafra, to fight for the freedom of Biafra, is crime. And if I have 18 charges, Mazin and Bikan also have 18 charges. That's the way they are going. And some of you don't understand it. That's why they have tried to destroy everything Amazon they can have done before he was kidnapped. I want you all to listen. One more story. <laughs> Are you hearing it? They claim that the broadcast I made on the evening of the day of that news, they claim it is not live. They are discussing it in their meeting. They say, oh, that broadcast is 2022. You hear it? They say it's a lie. It's not live. That, you know, that was not a live broadcast. The same thing they did to Mazen Amdekano. You know, they came with, uh, they, they, when the Mazen Amdekano was kidnapped in Kenya, they started tweeting with his Twitter handle. They even arranged that it's going to come live. They say it's going to come live to broadcast and all that. So now they claim that my own broadcast that day was not live. That is recorded. The broadcast of 2022. I want you all to listen. Yeah. He told them he will not play it. That they betrayed him. That was how because they have warned him. You know when investigation starts, he be warned not to do anything, do certain things. It's just like when they came to me. Are you hearing it? He is the people in Kuwait that Finnish authority has warned me. Not to broadcast again. And I said I will not go to broadcast again because they have betrayed me. Okay, I don't know who has betrayed me, whether it is the Finnish authority or whether it is the Nigeria government, I don't know. But the, I said that I will not, they have warned me not to broadcast again. So all this broadcast you see me doing is not me, it's fake. Maybe he's a, he's a, uh, uh, Al Sudani from Sudan is broadcasting here now. What <laughs> I don't know. So they gather in their small shell in Kuwait. And what they discuss is that they have one Simon Ekpa not to broadcast again. But I'm still here broadcasting. So I don't know what they are going to call me now. Whether I'm going to be Saddam Hussein. Whether I am, um, um, uh, what is the name? Um, uh, um, um, what is the name of this guy, of this man? That acted, uh, uh, that acted uh, the the uh, Gaddafi Gaddafi movie. Um, General, um, what is the name of the guy? <laughs> what is the name of the guy that acted Gaddafi? You know, in a movie, as uh, Aladdin. <laughs> I don't know whether they're gonna call me Aladdin, General Aladdin. <laughs> You know, this is not Simon Epa because they say he must not broadcast again. And the people are sitting there 
listening to this garbage and they are believing it. Just like those in Abba. They say that uh, autopilot were writing letters to Finnish police telling them that Simon is a good guy. So they asked me to be saying that I'm a good guy. <laughs> and and me, I am saying I'm a good guy. And this is where they are discussing how to get Biafra. So you can imagine, I was interviewed by Arise TV journalist from the United Kingdom that has nothing to do with whatever we are doing. Also, they claim that the Finnish Broadcasting Corporation that came to me to interview me is they are agent. They are agent. That they are a security agent that I didn't know. <laughs> In my own Finland, they are telling me that the Finnish Broadcasting Corporation that came to me was they were on, working on the ground that are security agent. Can you imagine? The people that I know, the people that I know and know very well, and they don't know, and the person that is feeding them this information has nothing to do with anybody in Finland. He's a criminal, ex convict, a convicted criminal in Finland. He has a criminal record. Like you know, that they explained to they, they, when he was explaining, he said, Oh, that's our guy in Finland, Williams. Say when he has his own problem, he had his own problem. He was convicted. He's an ex-convict, and these are the people that are that are giving them information about Finland. A convicted person in Finland. Is it where, where you know? So if we come to talk in Finland, I will come out, and he will come out. He's a criminal. He has a criminal record. I do not have any criminal record in Finland. I have never been fined by any court of law in Finland. These people have been convicted. So what they, what they are, are ex-convict. So is it the people that are going and are sitting and be having anything to discuss with? Criminals? I want you to listen. I, I saw... I don't know. Okay, I saw somebody. If you listen to all the day, you want to be a lot of Don't worry. Okay, because you don't know the canon what he is saying. You the canon did not just choose words or just say things out or from your own mouth. He followed up with events. Everything that has been happening, house insecurity has been Every new uh, news uh, agency that has carried all the news about Fulani SNL, the news about US, US government news, advice to their citizens in Nigeria, how they have reported the movement of Al Qaeda, Fulani SNL, and all that towards the southern states before he now came up with every normal human being we realize we know that there is need yes. and the big thing also said we have to do this he also said we met with the um the people in charge who are supposed to take care of this needs within the government and they have refused we have written letters we have made all the people i have the letter i have the letter with me the original copy as IPOB, we feel that we can support, we can help, we can come in to save lives. Before he said it, this guy, you watch his interview, you telling him, you have been killing us. It is time for us to defend ourselves. It is self defense. We are the good guys. <laughs> Others caught on this statement. I don't even know who it is. Especially what you 
You see, I think this good guy is failing them. We have to increase the volume of the good guy. I remain the good guy. They claim that uh, even the good guy, I didn't even know when how it came about. It was when the when the journalist that came from London was interviewing me. I was telling, explaining to him that in all this nonsense going on, I remain the good guy who say enough is enough. That was how the good guy uh, thing came about. <laughs> Nobody advised me to say to claim a good guy, a good guy. It just came up when I was explaining to the journalist that in all this nonsense, Atiku is a criminal, P2B is a criminal, um, uh, Tinubu is a criminal. And I asked the journalist, if it is in your own country, will you allow them to even have a, 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 a to even acquire the form to become a candidate in the election? You cannot allow them. So and then also apart from that, our people are getting killed. So I am the good guy here trying to say that enough is enough and somebody have to do it and I'm doing it. How does that become a problem of criminals in Kuwait that they will go to meeting, leave their job if they have a job and all you will be discussing is that how I was saying that I'm a good guy. I want you people to know who you are sending your money, your hard earned money in the name of fighting for Biafra. They are not fighting for Biafra. This is what they do when they go to a meeting and they will come to Radio Biafra to shout as if they have just discussed something. I have, in a day, at least, every day, I have not less than five meetings. How to get Biafra. <clears throat> Everything geared at how to get Biafra. I don't waste my time. How can I go to any meeting? And then I will be discussing, oh, you see, these people have Kelleg, that person have Kelleg. You know, anything you see me doing here, is what I'm doing at this point. I cannot go to any meeting and waste my time. I meet many people from different parts of the world. I meet with government officials discussing Biafra. I don't have time for this kind of nonsense. And when autopilot meeting, you know, when autopilot, the people that are on the ground working, meet, we discuss things, solve, bring solutions, bring ideas, and we move forward. And you are seeing it on ground. Round. What time do we have to come and start talking about rubbish? We don't even know that these people exist. In any meeting we enter, we discuss what we want to discuss and everybody goes their way. We have different committees in autopilot where we bring issues, problems, and solve it. So I don't see myself now going to the adversary committee and start talking nonsense. I go to adversary committee and say, we are, uh, Simon, they are inviting you for a meeting. I go to adversary committee. Do they have adversary committee? They don't. Do they, they don't have any committee anywhere. It is all about this nonsense. This nonsense. So I want people to listen as we continue. Those of you watching from, from Twitter, today's program is different. You have to join us on Enter Biafra. We have to, you have to manage Enter Biafra. Everybody is watching it. And, uh, and uh, it's, a, it's a decision that I have made today. A lot of people complain that, oh, the Enter Biafra is not, uh, is jumping and uh, doing this and doing that. Well, in, even in those social media, they also jump. The, the Facebook also jump and crack all the time. So in uh, Enter Biafra, I think we are better than Facebook because I remember when we were having, uh, when I was using Facebook, where I have over a, half a million people there, every time I come live, the live broadcast never were never stable. It has always jumped and jumped. So uh, that shouldn't be a reason why you cannot watch Enter Biafra. So those of you watching from Twitter, we ask you to switch to Enter Biafra. Well, we're going to watch it from there, and you are going to follow us. Thank you. All right. You know, as much as I appreciate those who are concerned about the Enter Biafra thing, you know, we have to use it on is our own. The more it is encouragement. To, if you complain that oh, it is jumping, you cannot use it follow it is that that's not encouragement so because even the social media you you rely on they jump and they close anytime and you can't do anything about it all right let us continue and he was not there <laughs> Shabby, no, 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 where he messed up where he messed up they know he was scared before the arrest coming was 
when he told them that he's afraid to die, they went in. It's one of the most foolish statements. He made that statement. Yes, no. Yeah, yeah. He said that I cannot go. They say that uh, my statement of that I don't want to die is a foolish uh, is a foolish uh, statement. That oh, that was where the the arrest. After that, they came to arrest me because they see that I'm afraid to die. I do not know what they are thinking. So is it me? If Mazenam Bikanu know that he's going to be kidnapped in Kenya, he will go to Kenya to be kidnapped because he's a fool. If Mazenam Bikanu know that he's going to be sold in Kenya. He will carry his bag because he is an actor. Actor that want to see fire and go and run into fire and let fire burn him because he has fire prevention garment on him. Can you imagine? So if they ask me, uh, if you go to Nigeria, they ask me, the question was, why are you not doing this in Nigeria? And that is the question that comes from everybody that is against Biafra. They will tell you, go to Nigeria and fight. Why should I go to Nigeria and fight? Because the idea is to silence the only voice speaking. Those people that are in Nigeria that try and dare to speak, where are they today? Where are they? Just look at the Eze in Lagos. Who ordinarily came out to say, we are going to protect Ndibu. We are going to bring IPOB to Lagos to protect us because they are killing our people and burning our shop. Ordinary statement, which other people has made even worse than that. They have captured him. And nobody is there to fight for him. And somebody is coming to tell me to go to Nigeria. Am I, am I a crazy person? And he is not in Nigeria. He is in Kuwait. And he cannot even travel to Africa. But Simon Epa, you think I will come and pretend that, oh, let me tell you, what I don't know is that this, these are people that are not educated. They are not educated. They don't know how to present things to the public. They don't know how to present things. They don't even know. How. Is China Samuru now? Can he go and talk to any president anywhere in the world? Can he go and talk to any parliamentarian anywhere in the world? He can't. Can China Samuru grant interview to any media? He can't. He run away all the time because it doesn't have sense. Somebody asks you, why are you not in Nigeria? It is an opportunity for me to present what Nigeria is all about. That if I go to Nigeria as an activist, as an activist, I will be killed. As simple as that. How does that, you know, amount to me being afraid of dying? But that's what they discuss in the meeting. It is an opportunity for me to bring it to the world that yes, in Nigeria, they kill political activists. In Nigeria, they kill you. In Nigeria, they imprison you. In Nigeria, there is no freedom of speech. So why should I pretend that, oh, don't worry, there is no problem in Nigeria. If I can go there and start fighting. Why should I, why should I say that when it is a lie? Now, now, they are trying to tell you, those of them that believe in them, that, oh, I am afraid of going to Nigeria. Ask them to go to Nigeria now. Why, why, why are they in Kuwait? They are not, they are not, they are not they have not even done half of what they have done yet they are scared of going to nigeria <clears throat> so listen this is a meeting of ipob Anytime they need me to be on ground yeah, or deployed on ground, you understand me? The leadership, anytime there is a need, they will deploy me and I'm ready to meet them. This is simple. Well, I'm I'm ready. Ready. So, that means you know that what he's doing is just yeah. yeah. Are you hearing that? They say that the reason I said if I go, uh, I don't want to go to Nigeria is because I, I know that what I, I'm doing is illegal. So, which means. What they were doing with Mazen Amdekano is illegal to them. And now they have pushed Mazen Amdekano and they sold him in Kenya. Only for them to continue to pretend as if they are fighting for Biafra. And now they send the, the, the Biafra innocent people to their early grave in Abba. Do you understand? I want you people to know and see the kind of people that we are fighting for Biafra for 13 good years. 
follow him as an I no wonder you say you hear him as an and say, I need a hundred men. I need hundred men because these people are not men. They are not the people you are going to take to war. He cried and cried of hundred men. Now you know why. And you know, in this interview, you know, even that day they are arresting. It was another interview. It didn't know it was the police this that called him that they want to grant another interview. Hi, God. So that was that time he wrote again. That was another interview. Another interview today. He don't know this was the <laughs> Can you imagine? In Finland, they have told them that the people that wanted to interview me, that called me to interview me, was not journalists. That were they were AK people, security people. Can you imagine? Finland is not a place where somebody will, where police will come to pretend if they want to come to you. They don't pretend. They call you straight. This is police. We need you. Why would police pretend and stop? The people that wanted to invite, wanted to interview me, were journalists from the capital city. From the city of Helsinki, and they call them Helsinki Sanomat. Can you imagine this guy is in Kuwait and gather the fools around him and vomiting this nonsense in the name of fighting Simon Ekman? This is like a Osofia story in the movie when he went to fight uh, Boma <laughs> after he came back from Boma. This is the story Osofia was telling the people that the people that called me to arrange a meeting is. The security agent, not not a journalist, and the, and that I'm a fool. I was thinking that they come to interview me. Can you imagine the kind of story? <laughs> hey, uh, interview happens to Taiwan now. Every 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 second interview, every week interview. Once I start, I start to make a point of view. That is the general. But imagine the man powerful. The man asked him what he asked him about powerful. He didn't call him a powerful to the interview. He didn't call him to talk about them. They asked him if what Simon Emma is doing, if we are the one responsible, is part of us. That's what they asked him a powerful. So a yeah, powerful will leave to exonerate IPOB and then. Uh, are you hearing it? And that was a lie. The man did not call him a powerful. It was a man powerful that called the man while the man was in the hotel room. Everybody who understands when I explain that uh, part of the story can understand it. The journalist was in the hotel room and the phone rang and he picked up the phone and he asked who is this and the person said he's Imam Powerful. So the man never called Imam Powerful. But the people that were guiding the man in Enugu, you know, the one Nigerian is P2P people that was guiding the man in Enugu, who gave the number of the man to Imam Powerful. And the powerful called the man. And I asked the man, did you know who is my powerful? The man said he cannot confirm who the person is. I said, did you see the face? You cannot know the person. And is the man powerful in the name of human being? Now he is telling them that the man called the man powerful and asked whether they are responsible for what Simon is. Why should they be responsible for what Simon is doing? Have I told anybody that I'm working with them? Why should anybody ask them whether they are responsible? They can never be responsible for what I am doing because we have expelled them and they are criminals. We've made it very clear. It is everywhere on social media. So how can somebody who is reasonable even ask anybody such question whether they are responsible for what I'm doing? When we are log ahead at each other. You see that that kind of thing doesn't make, does not make sense? So it is a lie. You know that we are fighting and we don't want to see each other because they are they are criminals and we have expelled them from, from the Biafra movement. So how can somebody now now call them and start asking them, are you responsible for what Samanepa is doing? Does it make sense to you? It does not make sense. And the one thing is this, you don't know that that man that was interviewing him, we already got information, he's a, a secret agent. Yes. The guy first go and make him interview. That first interview they grant him. He didn't know it's a secret service. It was sent. They sent him. The man after grant he gave him that interview today. For two days the man started coming to Nigeria. That day was this was doing this thing. So he didn't even be in his mind. He didn't know he was that man was a secret agent. 
Oh my God. <laughs> Unbelievable. You see, the man that came to Nigeria was not even the man that interviewed me. The man that came to Nigeria was not the man that interviewed me. And he is not a secret agent. This is a man who has worked in the Finnish Broadcasting Corporation for many years. And he is, he is now doing some kind of IT exchange service in Africa. He was never in my house. He was not even in Finland when this inter interview was granted. The man was somewhere in Kenya, either Kenya or one of the African countries, because he covers Africa. He was not in Finland. He was not, he was not part of the people that came to my house. And the man is a known journalist in Finland. And this man is in Kuwait telling the fools that he's a secret agent. <laughs> that the man who came to interview me is a secret agent. And that's why I never tag them on Twitter. Because they are there on Twitter. They are there on Twitter. And they are. this is how they lie. And, you know, the man that came to interview me was not the one that went to Africa. When they came here to interview me, the man that went to Nigeria was already in Africa, one of the African countries. Because he was there having exchange, doing some kind of IT training for Africa, covering some events in Africa. So he was not part of those that came to my house. And above all, the man is a well-known Finnish journalist for many years that have served in the Finnish Broadcasting Corporation. What has he got to do with police? What has he got to do with working as a secret agent? Okay? And so what they are trying to do is to try to tell you that, oh, they are aware of something. They have no knowledge of anything. I was aware that they are coming to Enugu State. I was aware that they left. And then if they continue to say that, oh, the day, the, the day they came was the day they invited the, the Finnish ambassador to, to, to Nigeria. Coincidentally, yes. Because the man was in Enugu. The man landed in Enugu on Sunday, on, on either Sunday or that weekend. I know when he left the country where he was and, you know, traveling to Nigeria. First of all, he went to Lagos. From Lagos, he flew to Enugu. I have the knowledge. And what did they do? The people that was those who were supporting P2B. So I know that they are going to take them to places where they are going to talk against the Simon Ekwasi at home. But at the end of the day, in all this blackmail, what did it, what was the end? What was the end result? The end result was that they have confirmed that I have influence in Biafra. They have confirmed that Biafra people are sitting at home. But what is unclear to them is my position in IBOB. That's all. So they did not believe what these criminals were saying. They did not believe what all the nonsense the Mapo Afu was saying. Because the only thing the Mapo Afu said was that, oh, he's not part of us, he's this, he's that, and they know he's a lie. Because everybody knows I have given sit at home order, and millions of Biafra are sitting at home. They came out on Monday, and you know what they did? They said a pregnant woman was killed. Who killed the, present, the pregnant woman? Still Chila Sangworu and his group. Because they thought that when they kill pregnant woman, it is going to be against Simon Ekpa, against Biafra sit at home. So whenever the Nigeria government use them, when will others sit at home, they go and destroy things in order to say it's Simon Ekpa group. Today, the truth is coming out. The same thing they have done, they went to police station, Chila Sangworu is bragging. And here in this meeting, Chila Sangworu is exonerating me that, oh, this, uh, all these uh, criminals, all this uh, criminality going on in Biafra land, that I am a, I am a foolish person, that uh, each time they commit this crime, I come to social media to shout, woto, 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 while I don't know how it happened. That is how they killed a pregnant woman. Thinking that that will blackmail me, or thinking that that will make me to say, okay, I'm not fighting for Biafra again, or thinking that that will say, okay, let us stop the sit at home. We are not going to stop sit at home. If you like, kill your father there. We don't care. What we cannot do is support the killing of any Biafra. Our fight is against the state. And that's what we're doing. You see, you see, when they, when they call us for interview here, when we launch ESA, 
Al Jazeera came, BBC came, all of them. Anybody that comes, I say, I'm not the one that speaks for IPOD. Are you hearing that? He's still mentioning that when they launched ESM, Al Jazeera came, BBC came, and when they come, he said, he is not the one speaking for IPOB. You can imagine. You can imagine the lies. Nobody comes to him. And even if they come, he can't speak. He cannot speak any sensible thing to any journalist. So, so he's running away from granting interview. What is he going to talk? This uh, thought, I grew up in Abba, or grew up in Abba. He, he don't have anything to talk. Anybody that is not uh, seeing anything, refresh your, your, not me. I don't need to refresh you. Refresh your own. Let me direct you to the media and publicity secretary. If we go there and dilute the talk, anything, this is the way you have, because they are looking for something they will rope you. One, that you say this. Even if not to say, if they don't rope you, but they want to understand your mindset. He said, the other woman who knows the woman said, is uh, Biafra spokesperson. And Tina Samoru is responding, is anybody dragging Biafra spokesperson with him? So why are they countering the order when a Biafra spokesperson gave order? Why are they countering it? In their meeting here, he claimed nobody is dragging it with me. He claimed that nobody is dragging Biafra spokesperson with me. But yet, whenever Biafra spokesperson give order, they come out and start countering it on behalf of the Nigerian government. Like you see now, you sit at home in Lagos, everywhere, they are countering it. Of course, each time they counter it, that is when it works the most. Each time they counter it, that is when Biafra are listening. Yet, in their secret meeting, he is claiming nobody is dragging it with me. So why are they countering the order that they did not give? Why are they countering the order when we have nothing, absolutely nothing to do with them? It, it is a, a, a snow, a snow, I never see. I never see. He didn't know the man. The man. You know what thing is this? The interview that man did in the and they didn't tell him by six. It's few. The main ones they did this thing is with the security. That's the ones they handed over. They have much many things now. They, so the man came that time. The man, the man came. You can imagine. He claimed that the video that the, the documented in Biafra land, they did not show everything. That they, you know, he think that when the man go to Biafra land and come out, he's going to show two hours of video or three hours of video. They have taken the most important one, which is the one they say a pregnant woman was killed by them. And no, now they are documenting it. They have handed it over to, to, to finish police. They have handed it over to Finnish authority. That is their aim, to kill somebody and kill people in the city at home and blame it on site. That's all, nothing else. And they take with that, I'm going to run away. He wanted to interview HOD, we refused. You understand me? He interviewed powerful. He wanted to interview job for also. We said no. Actually, the man said what he did from powerful. He said no. But he wanted to interview HOD. But we don't want HOD to grant such interview because by now what you'll be hearing is do as you say, Simon, don't say, you know, they will put us in the middle of all this. Uh, this is I have really dealt. I have really dealt with these people. <laughs> they will never forget the name of Simon Ekpa in their life. Can you imagine what they are discussing in their meeting? They will never ever forget my name. Any day they hear the name Simon Ekpa, they will be on the run. They tried everything to blackmail me, thinking that will push me out of the way so that will come back with their criminality and their first struggle. It cannot happen again. We have chased them out. And they are out of this struggle, and that is the end. I told them no. If you want to interview HOD, go through Chukwuja form and they need their You understand? So the man took that one and uh, he arrived two days. 
He said, he, he, he don't know. It's a connected something so that many people talk about it. It trigger. And the same day the man was in Nigeria, was the same day they invited the Finnish ambassador. I hear it. Everything is, you know, he's, he's just a fool. The guy was just. Uh, you don't know. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I I don't know. I I I I have I I I I I I where are you going to use it? You start sending it to Oscar, what is your contribution? What is your contribution? What is your contribution? Yes, yes. 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 That one, that one, that is it. I want your pay. He said, oh, you put $100. Oh, you put $100. Yeah. Now I'm the card of $15. <laughs> this head, Simon Nepal. $20. In their meeting, in their meeting, the criminal is calling my name very well. Simon Epa, $50. Can you imagine? <laughs> but when he comes to Radio Biafra, hey, infiltrator. He cannot call me infiltrator in their own meeting. He cannot call me infiltrator or equilima in their own meeting. If they address me properly in their own meeting. When he comes to Serenity Biafra, he pretend. You see, as if they have planned somewhere, as if there is something they have how to get Biafra. When they come to Radio Biafra, they shout, We know what we are doing. We know what we are doing. I want you to ask yourself, What are they doing? Ask them, How do you want to get this Biafra? How exactly do you? want to get this Biafra. They have absolutely nothing to offer. There is absolutely nothing how to get Biafra. Let us go talk about the objective of your struggle and how do you intend to achieve it in practical terms? In practical terms, it is civil disobedience. The same way that Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. accomplished civil rights in America, the same way that Mahatma Gandhi led India to independence out of British colonial rule, the same principles we are applying, and might I add, very successfully too. We will do everything possible to unravel and unshackle the zoo called Nigeria. Everything humanly possible. No stone will be left on time. Did you all hear that? That is coming from Mazin and Bikano, our leader, the person they are following. But they have actually fought against every civil disobedience in the upset of Mazin and Bikano.
The reason why my YouTube account was closed was because I shared the image of the attack on the Kenga Imo's residence, where there was somebody lying on the floor you know, on the street there. And because of that reason, they claim it violated the community standard. And because I have shared many, many images that, according to YouTube, violated their community standard and which must be shared. So I risk everything I did to build the YouTube channel, just trying to prove to the world what the Nigeria government and these criminals have done to the Biafra people by posting those images, risking over 30 million viewers on the on the YouTube, risking about 70 something thousand people who subscribe to our YouTube channel in order to prove to the world what we are going through. Today, we have our own platform where we can post all those things and nobody will block us. Now they are claiming that, you know, these are people without a vision. They have been fighting this thing for over 30 years. They cannot even have ordinary website where they can do something on their own. They don't have that kind of mentality. They don't have a mentality of a visionary mentality that can make them be creative and solve problems. They can't bring solutions to their problems. But to, in autopilot, immediately our social media, even Mazenam Dekano's own social media was blocked. His Facebook was blocked, was removed. And when Simon Epa, when it comes to the turn of Simon Epa, they claim I deleted the, the page. That is what they are using to brain, brainwash those who cannot think by themselves. But I want, you know, I want you to listen to what they are discussing in the meeting of IPOB in Kuwait. And this is what they discuss in other parts of the units where they are still gathering in their, in their few, in their few uh, numbers. No place it's going nowhere. What is really helping us, I feel, is patience. Okay. They, they say time heal everything. Yes. They need patience so they will do what they did to Mazina the country. To me. In the long run, the only um, negative part of it is that what you are supposed to get within 50 days, you won't get it in 150 days. What all of this delay, this. Uh, Come they back. can never come back. This you know, hiding yeah. information is on that crime. If he shuts down any of his accounts, yeah, it's a different crime. Yes, it's a different crime. Different crime. Yes. That means there's something that he's hiding. Yeah, like, hiding. Like, like. They are now contemplating in their meeting that if I shut down my social media handle, is a crime. That it means that. That is something I am hiding. My people, is there anything I am hiding? <laughs> Everything is on social media. When I have a broadcast, so many people stream it in their own platform. Is there anything? I'm, do I look like somebody who is scared of anybody or hiding anything? No. But they have to say it for them to continue to control few individuals who still gather with them and praise them. And you can be forced to open that yeah. So far, right. you must have gotten so, one, two, three, four, five likes. That is it. Once you have record of lies in your statement, Joe, from that communication, you said from which date they started investigating? I think that was from uh, Yeah, the month. They said, I think October. Uh, yes. And what they are discussing is from the statement they claim when they started investigating me. <laughs> Information is coming from an illiterate in Finland called William Wokede, a criminal too. That is where the information is coming from. Somebody who cannot read Finnish. He relies on what other people read to him. Or he relies on Google translation. He has lived in Finland for many years. He can't speak Finnish. He can't understand the language. Only when he, he go to Google, he copy it, translate it, he carry the information without understanding the language. Look at the information they are passing to people. That, oh, they, are, they were investigating me and I have 18 charges and uh, I have lied 
and I deleted my, you know, so something that doesn't exist. That I deleted the testing myself and I was lying. So for that reason, it's another crime, you know. But this is supposed to be IPOB meeting where they discuss how to release Mazenam the Colonel and where they're supposed to discuss about Biafra, which they put people on the street to go and die. And this is what they're discussing. Okay. And that, the, that uh, message they shared, you see their process now. They have stages mm -hmm. where they are going through. And, and it's already, they say it's already a suspect, you know, of criminal activity. So, and 18 charges is not, uh, it's not one day. We must do Are you hearing that? They say, I am a suspect already. You know, and the tea count charges is not a small thing. This is somebody that somebody in Nigeria have confessed of sponsoring them to kill Igwe. And I have killed an Igwe in Igbo land. This is somebody who has confessed of invading where Igbo people, where young people were having meetings and kill them and tag them courtist. But they were never courtist. They were just political opponent that his own political godfather hired to go and kill them. He confessed in the meeting of yesterday that I played the audio. All of you heard it. Now he is calling somebody else a criminal that he has 18 count charges. I do not know where they see 18 count charges. But ask him now. Bring where you see 18 count charges against Samonekpa. They cannot bring it. It doesn't exist. But the, he's telling that to the people in Kuwait. And Deceiving and brainwashing them just to get happy. No, oh, Simon Ekpa have 18, 18. And what you are telling, if, if they claim that Simon Ekpa have 18 count charges, it is not about me. <coughs> I want Bia France to understand that when they say 18 count charges on Simon Ekpa, it's not about me. They are actually talking about Mazin and Bikan. What they're trying to tell you is that. Whatever I have done today, whatever I'm doing today, Mazin and Mikano have done the same thing, and it is not a crime. But they are telling you that what we, me and Mazin and Mikano, have done and what we are doing to restore Biafra, to fight for the freedom of Biafra, is crime. And if I have 18 charges, Mazin and Mikano also have 18 charges. That is the way they are going. And some of you don't understand it. That's why they have tried to destroy everything Mazin and Mikano have done before he was kidnapped. I want you all to listen. One more story. I have to I have to I I am back. No, 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 that's not new music. That's old. Most of those things are even the brokers they say. Are you hearing it? They claim that the broadcast I made on the evening of the day of that news, they claim it is not live. They are discussing it in their meeting. They say, oh, that broadcast is 2022. You hear it? They say it's a lie. It's not live. That, you know, that was not a live broadcast. It's something they did to Mazen Amdekanu. You know, they came with, uh, they, they, when the man's name, the Kano was kidnapped in Kenya, they started tweeting with his Twitter handle. They even arranged that it's going to come live. They say it's going to come live to broadcast and all that. So now they claim that my own broadcast that day was not.